Hello, my astrology and soul tribe. This is Lada from astrolada.com. Today I'm here with one of our regular guests, Zurina, who is a teacher, a owner of Learn and Heal. Uh, heal and learn, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> heal and learn, yeah. <laughs> heal and, learn. <laughs> and we are here again to discuss a fascinating topic with this uh, beautiful and awake woman. We're talking about the new human and the new earth and prophecies because we both love to research and study and read. And not only that, Zurina can tap into it. Um, with meditation, with special techniques, into the collective unconscious and to see uh, manifestations of the future because everything, like she always tells me, everything is happening at the moment. So you can see glimpses of the future and the past. So she's here to share with me her vision and prophecies that she knows about the new human and the new earth that is emerging. Hello, Zurina. Hi, Lada. Thanks for having me again. Um, well, the thing is, there are so many prophecies that people keep following and are wondering and are being scared. Is this really going to happen? This sounds so scary. What am I going to do about it? And they hold themselves on to something that they're expecting to happen. Um, and I'd like to now demystify uh, what prophecies are or try to demystify them for you so that you don't take them as something written in stone so that you realize what's behind and how um, prophecies are created at all whether you should believe them and what you're doing if you're believing prophecies in the first place. Um, so I suggest we start first with, um, with a brief description of a book that we both read, or parts of this book that is on prophecies on the new earth. I, I think it's called... Let me see where, uh, the earth Awakens. New Earth. Ah, The Earth Awakens. Yeah, yeah. So I, I browsed through the prophecies of this uh, book and I compared them to other prophecies that I've read about, and it was all about uh, the separation of humanity um, in two to three vibrations. So vibration bands. Mm -hmm. These that prophecies they also... Call, yeah, they call the 3D reality, the 4D reality, the 5D reality. But I want to say that a lot of people think that being in 4D or 5D means you go on a different planet or you go on a different dimension and you don't see people around but i want to specify when people talk about 4d 3d 5d reality they mean you're all here but you see reality through very different perspectives someone in the 3d reality which is the normal there is fear they're worried all the time about food and uh about survival uh something it's called like chop wood and carry water and then 4D reality is enlightenment. You still chop wood and carry out water, but you're not worried anymore. You're not fearful. You don't live in fear. You uh, live in the beauty around you. You see opportunities everywhere. You live in joy uh, and you see totally different and you start attracting totally different beautiful experiences around you. The 5D reality that they're talking about, 5D vibration is very high. Then you, you're so awake that you can travel astrally, back and forth in time you can communicate with beings of uh, invisible beings of all realms you know and basically these books had a prophecy that within the next it's happening already till 2030 they say now the author says maybe it expands till 2040 uh, that people will definitely split in three vibrations 25% uh, will go into the 40 vibration whereas you know whereas there is a lot of uh, appreciation and love and 25% is a great number. 75% uh, will stay in the 3D, in the fear, in, um, you know, survival, struggle, uh, being controlled, uh, seeing the darkness, you know, uh, kind of helplessness victim state. And very small percent, like one or two percent will go to the 5D perception of reality. So, sorry to interrupt. Carry on. I just wanted to explain oh, you about different consciousness levels, what, what it means. So, people don't think one will be teleported to a different planet or something. <laughs> it could happen, but the, the definition of all the Ds, the 3D, the 4D, the 5D, um, I don't want to diss them or I don't want to diss any theory, but to me, 
this sounds um, arimanic in nature, this sounds technocratic, it's something that is uh, happening to you. You're suddenly classified as mm -hmm. a different type of a being, mm -hmm. while you're actually not a different type of being, of being it's just a, a frequency band, the level of vibration that you're uh, vibrating on and this level of vibration is not happening to you you're dictating it you're dictating it with your level of realization of who you are with your level of realization of uh, what a human being is what your capabilities are as a human being so it's i don't believe that it's happening to us because we are passing with the planet through a photonic cloud and it's activating our light bodies because there are a lot of uh, people that believe in this uh, activation of the light body, maybe it is happening, but only to the people who are ready to perceive it, to take it on. It's not happening to everyone. It's not something that is sweeping everybody because we are like antennas. If, you, if your consciousness is ready to, to plug in this high vibration, if you're already vibrating, only then you can plug to receive more information, to receive this light but it's not gonna um, raise your vibration externally it's basically no. it's it's uh, uh that's what because some channelers say oh it's like just just be there and your consciousness will raise we'll all raise we'll all become crystalline beings and whatever but yeah it's it's actually work over many lifetimes or it's a state of consciousness it's it's how you think about yourself about your life how you feel that's that's the only way you can raise and that involves a lot of critical thinking a lot of self-analysis it involves a lot of um, i would not say just meditating all day <laughs> it's not that it's it's a conscious striving towards virtue helping uh, loving others opening yourself to others clearing up painful past uh, experiences as well that's true and and uh, i actually believe that the the, the the, the highest uh, realization that we can have as humans that is a part of this consciousness that can raise this consciousness is um, the feeling of love. Because we are the ones as humans, the, our first creation is a child or our natural creation is a child. And ideally a, a child is created with the feeling of love. So this is how we create with love. And I've experienced this many times in my groups that I, uh, that I teach. Um, there are different courses that I now call the heal and learn method because it's not the silver method. They're based on the silver method. But in the mastermind groups, we, we very often, I've told you many times about the experiences in these groups, uh, but maybe not to your audience. Um, and what I've come to realize is that what works in these mastermind groups when we do manifestation is not uh, that we all focus on the image that somebody is projecting. Let's say Jennifer wants to have, uh, wants to manifest a partner and a child, and we all focus on that and we experience the feelings of joy that Jennifer would feel. But the thing is, Jennifer is not receiving um, her manifestation goal because we have all done something to her. Maybe it's a part of it because we have wished her well but she is receiving because she in turn has sent feelings of love and of wishing well to other people and blessings to other people. And thus she has raised her vibration. And so she can now reach her goal because naturally a goal that you want to manifest puts you at a higher vibration. You want it because it's going to make you happier. So when you, you know, when you uh, match this vibration, by wishing somebody well, by and especially the feelings of love, because I asked them to create links of love, links of love and light between the images that they're creating and the other people involved. So this was just a, a, another proof for me that, um, uh, that consciousness, the realization of, of us as human beings, of these higher virtues that you just uh, mentioned now, and what we are capable of with love, I think this is the way forward to um, envelop these abilities that we're going to have. Maybe they're going to be two streams. Maybe they're going to be three streams of, of people. You know, it, we don't know because it's just a prophecy. And a prophecy is only valid if we believe in it. Mm -hmm. 
if we don't believe in a prophecy that the world is going to split in two, maybe it's not. But I think already a critical mass have believed mm -hmm. in... Uh, people think they're so different from each other already. Some people live in so much joy and uh, love and the idea of war is so foreign on them while others, they just want to draw blood. <laughs> and they, you know, it's, it's, there, there is definitely this very different beings coexisting at the same time on earth. And I, I think also because for me, Aquarius is like two uh, streams. This is the symbol of Aquarius, it's two parallel streams. And that's how I feel intuitively where things are going as per the current energy of the earth. Uh, current, uh, what I feel, you know, it's, it's, there will be two streams that are running parallelly. It's not going to be like humans go like that or against each other. Parallel. It's like they're not going to bother each other. One will live in this perception of reality, of scarcity. They'll prefer, you know, to, they'll rely again on out authority. Uh, they'll rely again on a lot of technological and outer resources, like you were saying, for extension of life, for, um, well, we're talking before the interview, we're talking about that, um, that there'll be extension of life, there'll be a lot of new technologies that prolong your uh, stay here on earth, uh, maybe build uh, body organs, print body organs and whatnot. Uh, and there'll be another parallel um, uh, group of people that they will be developing uh, also extended lifetime. They'll be uh, developing amazing abundance, all using natural means. And like Zurina said, this only happens through love, through the vibration of love. And that they will come in communities that help each other. That it's not necessarily that they even living next to each other, but eventually they will decide this is the most, uh, let's say, practical way. Uh, where they would uh, collaborate with each other and where they will create beautiful, like a heaven on earth, like gardens of uh, abundance. And they would also use technologies, but not to, uh, like Zorina says, to raise their, to, to artificially raise their consciousness, just to make their life easier and more abundant. But there's technologies that, they, uh, but what is going to be the real revolution in that parallel stream of people is the, uh, increase vibration of love that they have and actually uh, when you're in a community of like-minded people I don't know if anyone has gone to a retreat or to a seminar uh, especially on spiritual topics especially on healing or like Zurina does she has a groups nowadays no one can travel but she makes groups of 10-15 people where they start increasing the vibration of love between them and when they start manifesting for each other, they hold the vision of manifestation for each other and fill it up with love. Uh, and it starts happening. So you have a lot of manifestations that happen in your groups. But also when you go to any retreat or uh, with like-minded people, how you feel like you're on cloud nine. I've had the, the, uh, the honor to have such a retreat. I, I, I felt like I was going to fly off. And for weeks after that, your vibration keeps higher. So when people now will start actually living like that, uh, constantly be, and having, for example, you have a community and at night you go around the fire and you uh, uplift each other, you do spiritual visualization or exchange of love or stories, you'd constantly have this high vibration that you feel when you go to such a retreat and uh, when you connect with like-minded people. And the speed of raising of consciousness in those communities will be monument will be like, uh, I don't know, so fast because of this constant holding of love and holding of, uh, of, of, um, of course, people say, oh, people living in community, they'll fight all the time. Imagine what a nightmare it will be. This will be also there, of course, when you constantly live with someone, but the predominant vibration is those people are ready and those people unite because they don't want to be part of the other, very technocratic, very robotized state of consciousness, very regimented uh, parallel reality that is existing around them. 
Uh, sorry, I hijacked the conversation. That's my, yeah, no, no. That's my I, 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 topic vision, how I see it, because I just know how when you're even just talking with you, because you're a very good friend of mine or someone else that we're on the same frequency in mind, how I feel like I have little wings and how I feel over exhilarated and excited. And that's raising of a vibration. Raising of a vibration happens with just one conversation that excites you that makes you feel positive imagine if you're in a group of five ten people can you tell us stories how you work with people in groups of, and this is very aquarian what you do you work with people in groups to manifest for each other because even jesus says if two or three come in my name manifestations i'll give them whatever they want <laughs> you know it's almost like you're doing this um you you combine and you hold a presence and you hold a vision for the hopes and dreams and uh, desires of another person. Can you, can you see, how, can you explain how it works? So people will get an idea how those communities will also work uh, and what is possible there, how fast manifestation starts happening uh, when you work together with others. Yeah, but be, before I actually explain what, what, I, what I do together in, with the other people in these groups, um, I'd just like to insert how I, feel about the the raising of level of consciousness of people that are going to choose the technocratic way because they're going to believe that they are also raising their consciousness yes uh, uh, so the, the, they're already um technical means uh through sound through light through which you can experience this lifting of vibration you can feel better the thing is it becomes a crutch after a while you cannot do without it yeah and it's a um it's almost like a drug. You, you imagine. It's like a drug. You, yeah. Without it, you can't deal with it. And at the beginning, when I would do my courses, uh, I would offer people to do uh, entering with Alpha, apart from me guiding them to listen to uh, Theta Beats. Um, but I warned them, please try without the Theta Beats as well, because I don't want to create a crutch. I don't want you to always have to listen to Theta Beats in order to go in Alpha, because this is actually a very simple process. It's just a process of decision that you relax that your heart is relaxed and that you're now in alpha it's as simple as that so all the steps the methodologies the technicalities of all the methods that you can imagine out there are useless it's just a decision with your mind and the conviction that you're able to do it with your mind and with your heart and knowing that you can do it it's the belief i'm now going in alpha full stop of course i can teach you all the um um the tools and the techniques because people still love techniques and people still love tools and they work yeah you want to say something because, because the technique when you don't believe you can do it the technique is something that makes you think okay i'm doing something step by step so it should there is a scientific logical way to it you know like taking a placebo pill the same thing and techniques are necessary i think at the beginning and then when yes. you know you can do it then just leave all crutches absolutely all crutches yeah yeah and, and i also believe that in the communities um later on there will hardly be any disagreements and fights because um these disagreements and fights are likely to happen when, when there's a fluctuation of of vibration you know once you're high once you're down and you haven't realized who you are really mm -hmm. but these communities will create something like a, uh, an energetic bubble. Exactly. So um, you're going to be in a constant realization and, and consciousness. And especially because these communities, as prophesized, are going to be made of people uh, who live very close to nature, who interact with nature. And this is a, 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 a huge part of, mm -hmm. of the whole process of mm -hmm. us interacting very closely with nature. Mm -hmm. it will activate all the innate abilities that people have it's not going to be you sitting in your concrete apartment uh listening to alphabet mm -hmm. it's going to be you interacting with earth sowing mm -hmm. seeds creating wishing sending love you know all the the natural human um predispositions that we have because we are naturally predispositioned to love and to feel joy yeah and now about the uh, the the heal and learn methods well, what exactly do i do in these groups 
uh, people feel attracted to, to this method because I say it's based on the silver method and I indeed use a lot of uh, silver method techniques, as I said. But eventually what I'm aiming for is for people to realize that it's their decision and their belief. It's not, or, and the love that they feel, it's the feeling in their heart. Mm -hmm. So it's a combination of a lot of um, different techniques that I've experienced and I've seen what works. So um, what we do, um, so what we have done so far in, in the previous groups was an extended version of the heal and learn method. But what I'd like to offer people now is a version where we clarify the major questions that are going to bring the human forward. And these major questions are who you are, what your skills as a human are, what are you capable of? What do you really want? So, and that's why I've called it um, manifest with purpose because what you really want uh, is related to purpose, but purpose by itself is created, uh, is related to creating meaning. So it's not like you have a set up purpose there. You have to create the meaning yourself. This is how you raise consciousness. So I'd like to uh, walk you don't rely on God to give you purpose. You don't rely, oh God, tell me, what am I here to do? You, you start creating the meaning in your own consciousness. This is how you attract it. And we, we talked a little bit about uh, predetermination and free will. And very often, uh, this is just a uh, retraction from, what, uh, from the explanation of the course, but I gave you an example of uh, one of my participants that um, created an image of a, of, the, of a person she would like to be with, so of her partner, and we all worked on this image. And after a few sessions, towards the end, we asked her counsel, a counsel that she designates, so it could be a consciousness, it could be a person. So we asked this counsel whether her soul, um, her half, is on earth, and if, if they could give us an image of what this person looks like and the image was almost identical to the one she created On, only uh, he didn't have a beard mm -hmm. roughly so the image was very close and now the question is did she create it or was this image already there yeah and the thing is in this realm of creation there is no time yeah whether she created it or it was already there the question is you realizing that you're activating these images. You're calling them forth with your consciousness. Uh -huh. And you're filling them with love because you all work like exactly. 10, 15 people to feel the, say, I say my dream is to have a child or my dream is to meet this person. And everyone focuses on that and just sends love and love and love. And that's, that's what, what speeds manifestation is love. No, that's. Uh, <laughs> yes. And, um, but we don't only send our love. What we do is we see people that are involved in this image, in the picture. So everybody who, is uh, who will be impacted by the creation of this picture, we see them happy. We see them joyful, feeling love for the image as well. So we create multiple points of attention mm -hmm. of love and light. Oh. So everyone yeah. targets from different area with love like the people in your life the image itself yourself how you impact others oh that's beautiful i should probably come and join to have my <laughs> new website manifested faster <laughs> <laughs> and 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 um have you seen such manifestations happen much faster with people that you work with oh yeah many times Manifestations happen all the time. So people find their partners uh, within a month, basically. Um, I think I gave an example, maybe to you only, I can't remember if we ever talked about it, but one woman, I, uh, we talked about it in a, in a video, one woman bought a house very fast and she had been looking for two and a half years. And then this was um, a tremendous in human view manifestation because you know it's a big thing. It's not like I manifest uh, a coffee in a restaurant. <laughs> oh, and, uh, uh, people manifested jobs um yeah mostly that partners jobs and the only material that's thing what that people I ask for yeah. partners yes. careers and uh, 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 purpose of meaning to find uh, I, I just manifested the house as well i've been looking for <laughs> really? four years four seriously years and wow Bulgaria. <laughs> well done <laughs> 
And I remember that I was just like, I, I, uh, a month before that, I sat and I said, I want to imagine how it will be. And I sat and I dreamt and I dreamt probably three or four hours. It was in my mind. I was just focusing and trying to imagine the image and how it will look. And, uh, and then on the next two, three days later, no, maybe a, a, two, three weeks later, but I had this image so strongly in my mind. Um, because till then I was like, I wanted something, but I wanted to see it and say, oh, this is it. So I was like just browsing through things and I never liked anything. For four years, I never liked. And then I sat for a month and I was like, oh, let me dream what it's going to be like there. And I imagine us playing with the kids, hugging, uh, running around and, and how it looks and where the sun comes from and what the feeling is. I, I focused on the feeling. And I just had such a great time. I, I, I couldn't snap out of it. I fell asleep at four in the morning because I felt so excited imagining that. It was like living a dream. And a few weeks later, I decided just to open again to the pages and I saw the house and a wave of love hit me from there. And I was like, oh. I, I felt like I'm not going to get too happy. <laughs> I shouldn't get too happy, but I need to recognize it. So yes, this is what, what you do as well, isn't it? It's not for hours, but you, you basically create an image and you fill it up with feeling and love. And, and for me, finally, when I sat, took time to do it, and it's great fun, actually. People think, oh, this is exhausting. My mind will hurt from trying to do that. No, actually, you're having a kick. You feel like you're there. And, and it finally happened. So I'm very happy. <laughs> Yeah, manifestation, it's fun. It's not tiring. It's the other way around. Because when you're in alpha, um, which is what I, I advise people to do, because that, that's when you're completely relaxed and um, your feelings can be released. You know, yeah. you, you can't just put a wishing well on top of being angry or, or on top of being yeah. very, or the feeling of busyness. So you need to be very relaxed in order for this feeling to flow. Yeah. Yeah. So you're doing basically already with those little circles and the people that you work with, they become like a family and I'm sure they become friends for life after that because they've shared their most intimate secrets and they exchange energy and they send love to each other. This is how you connect links of, um, of uh, connection with people. And I, I, this is you doing in a mini variant during the, uh, in a mini uh, version what people will be doing in the age of Aquarius so the Saturn Jupiter conjunction in Aquarius the next 20 years this will become more and more this is how people will come together to take decisions uh, will come together to enhance manifestation and to co-create so you're doing this work um, now on a personal level but very soon I believe I don't know why, but like, I, I, this is my vision. Even if you don't want it, it's my vision. We'll be all living close to each other and we'll be doing this in person. <laughs> yeah, but, um, you know, it's the feeling that, um, that, that you have when you're working on the manifestation of somebody else's image that matters. So I, I think I already mentioned this, but it's what you feel and what you're wishing well. It's not that somebody else is, uh, giving you like an indulgence. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm not, you know, like the church said, indulgences. I'm going to pray for you and I'm going to erase your sins. It doesn't work <laughs> like that, that somebody is going to uh, send you love and light and going to mani manifest your images. You have to raise your vibration by realizing that uh, by, by giving to somebody else, by creating happiness in images, you're actually doing yourself a favor. So everyone else is involved and everyone sends love to each of the persons of the group and that's what raises their vibration yes so, so that the love that was sent to them uh helps them manifest their uh you know yes. what, what they need and what they desire okay so basically yes. if you're just sitting in the circle and receiving love it's not going to work as powerfully no you have to get involved with everyone's creation wow this exactly. is exactly how it because the yeah. only way to raise vibration is when you send love, not so much only when you receive it. Exactly. It's, it's a, I think the new age, uh, Lada, the new earth, the new human, it's about taking responsibility. It's, it's um, not, uh, not relying on external uh, factors, on external events to inf influence your life. Like um, imagine all of the people that are still hoping Trump will save us, or there is a savior coming. 
Yeah, yeah. It's putting your strength and, and uh, what you want and what you're relying on onto something external. Yeah, or just like a lot of people that rely on the system to give them support. And sometimes it's needed when you're sick and, you know, uh, but I, I, what do you think of uh, universal income? What is your thought? How would that, do you think this is something good or uh, something bad? Maybe it's good for the for the for the three D stream of people, I would say, because uh, they would need it. But for the ones living close to nature, yeah, they will be abundant. They would not be needing something else. This is this is what binds them to control. So yes, I think that would be a means of control. But they will need it. Whoever is living in the smart cities or part of the system, they will need that. Uh, they will need this basic income. Uh, to survive by giving up certain freedoms, of course. Um, but uh, yeah, there's a very simple solution. If people are afraid, well, I don't want to give my freedoms. Uh, simple solution is buy some land, get some exactly. panels. And of course, if someone say, how can I buy land? I'm a teacher and whatever. Find a few friends, like-minded people. They can buy the land. You can help do it there. The, if you have the vision, it will happen. If you have the, uh, and it's going to manifest so fast now in the Saturn, uh, uh, Jupiter in Aquarius age, even this year, but the next 20 years that they influenced by that, you just put it in your mind and you will find your soul tribe. And because in the age of Aquarius to thrive, you, you can't just do it totally alone. You really need like at least a group of two, three people there. Uh, you can start alone, but you detract so quickly those, you like, a, like a bee uh, to honey, you detract around you like-minded people because the vibrations now of, of connection, of connecting like-minded souls. And the ones that are there to fight the system, they'll attract each other and will be there still hoping for the system to change. And while well, the others will say, what's the point of wasting your energies and fighting and uh, just leave them alone they can live their life the way they want and let us live our life like ah, this is my field <laughs> i'm looking for a piece of land <laughs> like that yeah <laughs> so, yeah you know i was i was um uh, watching the channel of um, a lady in sweden in sweden who uh, shows the beauty of nature in sweden and um she has something like 2.3 million followers or something like that. And it made me think, you know, the only thing she's showing people is how to live in nature, in the forest, how to enjoy the beauty of the fog in the cold night or how to, um, I don't know, dip herself in the cold, icy water, things like that. I know her. And yeah, I follow. You know her? <laughs> yeah, I love her. Yeah. Yeah, she's great. But why do people love that? Because it's so innate and natural for us to be close to nature. Because we yearn for that. Mm -hmm. But we just don't have the guts. Most of, most of the people don't have the guts to get separated from... Um, yes, because of jobs, tendons. I remember I grew up in nature. My grandma was from a village. There was no toilet even in the house. All the food came from the earth. We'll but should wake up at five o'clock animals everything so i grew up wild i grew up honestly like a monkey on the trees most of the time and in the gardens and uh, and uh, it's there was never and and that's what you know but a lot of people grow up without having ever experienced that they grow up in a city they never see that and depressions are so prevalent in cities disconnection from earth and the cycles of nature bring to depression to stress to uh and you never think there is something. So you take pills, you take whatever you think you are defective. Uh, yeah. And these, some people never, that's what saddens me because I was blessed that I experienced what it is to live like that. And despite of me going to the big city and living there for 20 or 15 years, I always yearn because once you felt that high vibration, you naturally are drawn to that. So some people, it will be so simple for them to do it. And I want to give hope to those that have grown and never experienced that in cities that uh, because they feel there is no hope. What am I going to do? Live like a peasant from the 13th century? 
uh, and they, they imagine something very different than it is. They imagine like a lot of deprivation, a lot of working in the fields and mud and rain. It, it is not that at all. There is a sense of community. And I remember in our village, everyone was living like that. And there was, there was no mental health problems. There was people were dying at the age of 80, 90, drinking all night dancing singing it's like grandma smoking it's it's it didn't the eating meat and whatever but because they were like uh it's it's, it's this vibration of community of connection to nature uh yes there were rough things you know of course but people lived so long and there was absolutely no mental health issues no depressions i've never heard that word before uh, so people will go mm. back to that, at least a certain percentage. And those of you who are listening who live in the cities, maybe it will touch your heart. If you want to be part of such existence, believe me, all signs of depression, of um, even chronic diseases, they disappear when you're, when you're living like that naturally. And I want you to know that there is a better way. Um, and that's my dream, you know. <laughs> so I'm not, right now. I'm programming you guys. <laughs> we got to do that. <laughs> I, I, but let me help you here. <laughs> I think that most people are scared of um, of, the, of the image of going back in time. Of they're imagining hard peasant work. No, but, um, I don't see it uh, being like this in the future. I mean, you're still going to. Uh, maybe enjoy some the presence of some animals and poultry or uh, and, and have your garden but it doesn't mean you're going to dig in the field all day long no at least i don't see it like that and also in a in a phase of transition uh you don't have to uh, leave your mobile phone and your technology behind i mean you can still do whatever you're doing online now you're able to so what keeps you in the city I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. Even what this book that we were sharing, I read the whole of it. I, you had just the beginning. And he says mm -hmm. that communities, uh, he, he's being given by something called the founders, like uh, entities, whatever. And they're saying that in those communities, people will uh, be very high tech, very highly technological. For example, they'll have zero... Uh, percent zero grav something zero gravity technology mm -hmm. but basically limitless energies and they'll start implementing those systems within a, a few years he said they're created already they exist and those communities they will not need permission from governments or permits they'll say okay it's very apparently it's not a complex device zero zero whatever gravity and they'll all have mm -hmm. it so the energy will be abundant uh, that you can, the, a lot of them, a lot of those people will be specialists, engineers, uh, robotic specialists, whatever. And he said, the interesting thing is that a lot of people are fearful uh, that those communities will be like, uh, say a community of 200 people and a hundred of them will be healers or, or, you know, astrologers or light workers yeah. and everyone will be starving. And he said, it's not going to be like that at all. Actually, uh, it's going to be so that each group will attract, without even conscious uh, focus, uh, the right amount of uh, electricians, of uh, hairdressers, of uh, uh, marketers, you know, they'll be from each group of people. And he said it's not going to be like suddenly that, oh, just the healers are awakening and want to live there. It's going to be, uh, there will be a few of them in every community, but he was they were describing, that's what they were telling him, that they will be so eclectic and so diverse the communities people that are handy people that are, and say for example i'm worthless I, i'm so bad with doing growing anything i decided this year to grow a garden and mm -hmm. i worked on it and whatever two flowers grew i've planted it in march and in december two measly flowers came out <laughs> i'm not a food grower i don't have green fingers i know it you know so you don't have to be uh, uh, um, food grower you don't have to be uh, someone who is you know uh, who has to dig all day in the dirt you contribute with your skills i'll be i'll be going there and giving advice to the others <laughs> walking around and saying now pray here now do this but everyone will have different things to contribute so don't think it will be um, you know going back to the middle ages so it's yeah 
of course you don't need to grow your own food if you don't want to but it's it's going to be much healthier for you if you manage to grow it yourself but this brings me to the and probably the last thing because we we're talking for too long now but it brings me also to the uh to the economic system or the monetary system the system of exchange that is going to exist in parallel in these communities because of course nobody this will uh, defy the purpose of us growing consciously if we have to provide for everything ourselves if we have to oh. build our own houses our make your our own please make your own clothes exactly <laughs> no, yeah. that, it's not so of course <laughs> yeah so if anybody is imagining it this way yeah. it's not it's it's just going to be an alternative uh, monetary system within these communities that is not controlled Yes, and I'll order from here, and I, the, the, I don't. I think there will be a way not to even pay taxes on those things. Uh, it's like I, it sounds like something bad, but people will gather their own taxes in those communities. Everyone will give a portion. They'll go mostly to education. Uh, this is how it's also seen by many uh, visionaries. This is how I see it because the age of Aquarius is about giving knowledge. Because the most important thing is to give critical thinking and. Uh, skills and knowledge to people so there will be it will go the, the most well-paid people will be teachers there which is now they're so underappreciated it's almost like on purpose it's done so children come out you know and, and able to think independently uh, but the most well and this is as again as I said it's not it's not just uh, a prophecy it's also how I see that in Aquarius the most highly valued thing will be knowledge so teachers and educators and skilled te you know skilled dispensers whatever they will be the most valued in communities they'll be the most i would say even highly paid uh also like scientists people creators of new things and uh and people will decide where the taxes go within that community and it won't be like 50 percent and crazy things like that it will be some i contribute whatever with their skills or uh, with the, whatever they're producing, but there will be, I believe there'll be an alternative monetary system, like you said, maybe uh, something like Bitcoin, but it's going to be electronic, very likely even digital. I don't think we'll be bartering. Here is a kilo of apples. Give me, uh, uh, you know, some mittens. It's not going to be mm. like, that. it's going to be again, very technologically savvy. Uh, of course, it's an integration of what we already have, taking the best of both worlds. Yeah it's yeah. uh yeah. <laughs> i can't imagine you and me in the fields muddy digging all day <laughs> well honestly this could be a lot of fun you know that they say that when you dig your with your fingers in the mud it actually the, the mud contains some particles i don't even know what they are but right. it actually cures you from depression is so anybody's yeah I, well, I can I can pull out weeds, you know. <laughs> Everyone can. Do that. <laughs> I don't think like it'll be ten hours on the fields. Maybe people right. do communally two three hours each per day, more like an exercise and a communal fun activity that they get together. Yeah. Uh, but there'll be some people that are just so passionate about the food, and they'll be in charge of, you know, growing the food of those communities, developing different uh, hydroponic systems and different permaculture systems and everyone will have a say uh, what wants to be grown. But if your skill is to cook uh, and your skill is to grow, everyone will be honored for their skills and your skill is to create robots or technology. So, you know, everyone will, you know, the, it's not gonna be that everyone has to do the same thing. This is, and that's how everyone saw it, you know, in their mm -hmm. visions when I've read prophecies or whatever, even if you don't think it's prophecies, alternative possible realities. Uh, so I so I'm sorry for interrupting, but I'm like, if if you like what uh, Lada just put out there, start believing it because this is how we're going to manifest the prophecy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe it with my full heart. <laughs> I find <laughs> ways always to to see it like that. So. <laughs> but yeah, so if not to carry on too long, I just love those conversations with you. I can carry on for hours, but. Um, just if anyone would like now they're not available those communities still but if you'd like to work in a small group with people creating this communal bonds and creating learning how to exchange the love 
and they exchange love like uh, you give to others the images of their life, of their future, and they give to you. Uh, this is very Aquarian in nature. This is what Zorina is doing. She's, you're kind of like, um, you're doing what the age requires now. <laughs> you have your hand on the pulse of uh, the cosmic influences and you're doing this in small groups. You're starting a small group again very soon. Yes, I'm starting a new group on the 6th of February. It's not going to be um, called the other 96% only manifestation. I actually would like to lead people through the whole consciousness process of realization of who they are and what their clear images of what they want and why they want it. So we're going to go through clarifying everything before going into manifestation because this is when it works the best, when it's all aligned. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I think yeah. there's power in working in groups, definitely yeah. spiritually and mentally. So uh, wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing your work with us. I'll put a link to your website below uh, for people. And uh, my call to you is, guys, let's create this new future together, this new human, this new earth. I feel it like a personal call that <laughs> with my Aquarius ascendant, like I, I have to make this happen. <laughs> Before we go, Lada, I know it's again and again and a new thing that comes up in our conversations, but before we go, how do you see the development of astrology in this new earth? Uh, there'll be one mad astrologer in every community or a few, and I believe that it will become part of the curriculum. I believe because you decide your, um, the curriculum will be decided by people living in those communities, what will be studied. And of course, a lot of it will be very practical, uh, you know, how to make things happen how to think individually how to develop uh, imagination it will be so much about imagination the education but there will be part of it where uh it's dedicated to occult sciences like astrology uh even for the sake of gardening astrology is used when to plant with the moon and i believe that every child will there will have the basics of it uh and it will not be used for prediction so much as for healing uh, and it will be used much more for, uh, because this, the more vibration rises, the, the more consciousness rises, the more free will you have. So it's more difficult to predict. Like you said, those prophecies are so shaky nowadays because the more free will and higher consciousness people raise, the, the harder it is to set frames and to make plans. Um, so they will be, it will be used more like a tool for uh, seeing the highest possible manifestation, even of a difficult aspect, like you were, we were talking with you before that, uh, for example, Saturn conjunct Venus, oh, pain, love, lack of money. Uh, yeah, but there is a higher manifestation and that's love for work, uh, uh, love for the uh, manual work even, you know. So you stir people's consciousness to the high vibration and again, possibly in community, I would imagine, I just try to imagine the children or grown-ups sitting and one in the middle and there is a painful aspect in their horoscope, uh, Pluto opposition moon and uh, they are prone to attract, uh, uh, you know, they're prone to have panic attacks or fears or something like that. And that people just focus their love and their image how Pluto opposition moon for example manifests as deep profound psychological uh insight instead or ability to uh heal and transform the feminine body which is the moon so each combination astrologically has a very low vibration possible and a very high vibration possible and with the more free will that will exist in those communities people will focus consciously on the high vibration of their charts and basically reconstruct themselves in, a, in, in the highest possible manifestation. Uh, within, Beautiful. of course, it's always within frames. If I was not mm -hmm. born with the ability to, uh, you know, to, with desire for music, no matter how much I'm forced to play music, I'll probably never become a virtuoso, you know. So everyone has certain things that they're drawn to, you know. You're attracted to mm -hmm. uh, teaching, you're attracted to the earth. Uh, within those bounds, but there is the, the possible highest manifestation you can have. So that's mm -hmm. how astrology will be used to 
almost like a psychological tool to pin pinpoint where the biggest stagnation of a person is, where the biggest, the weakest spot is, uh, where they're prone. And the biggest learning. And yeah. The biggest learning. Yes. Yes. So, the, and, and they'll try to, everyone will try to mm -hmm. help and be aware of that situation and have, for, for example, if someone needs a lot of affirmation or they, they're very, you know, people will be aware of that. And you can pinpoint that with astrology very strongly. Mm -hmm. And I believe it will be used as well for the big cycles. Uh, it will be used for planting, for starting things like elective astrology, uh, maybe for marriages and uh, building, you know, when is the best time? This, it, this is the highest purpose of astrology. So yeah, Good. so be careful who you use as a as an astrologer because you don't want them to manifest or to make you believe that something bad will happen to you. <laughs> <laughs> they'll raise their vibration quickly. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. I have to go. I have a massage. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> I love this, you, Zori. Thank you so much. If anyone would like to join Zori's group. She does a group almost every month and they become so strong, so bonded. Uh, you can click on the link below on the description and uh, see, and it will take you to Zori's website. Uh, so thank you so much. And uh, yeah, may this new human... See you in the new earth. <laughs> yeah, in the new earth. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Lada. Thank you.